if Albert wants to come on and 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 talk about it, I mean, I'm more than willing to have him on, um, and we can discuss it. I mean, if anybody from Stockfish or Leela, of course, if they're interested, I certainly would be totally happy to host a discussion, debate, or a chess boxing match if um if they're they're interested. <laughs> All right, we are back. Time for some drama. Time for some controversy Nicole to um to, to talk about. So we're going to be talking about the issues the regarding Fat Fritz Two. It is a chess engine. Uh, it's being being published, I believe, by Chessface. Uh, they are a chess company. And um, wait, sorry. Thank you. Let me let me mute, mute the donos as well. Thank you. So it's being put out by um by Chessface. I think for a hundred euros. So it's not. It's definitely not cheap. Um, and there is quite a bit of drama around it. So let's uh. Uh, let's start with this. What is this? Context of that was that we have a situation where there's a program that's being published by a company called Chessbase, and they are essentially supposedly that they're still they're stealing it or something. I'm not sure exactly, but let's let's read the article. Um, okay, February 18, 2021. The Stockfish, Leela, Chess Zero, and Lee Chess teams announcements: an important message from open source chess organizations. A few days. Let me scroll down. <clears throat> A few days ago, Chessbase released Fat for its two, described on their website as the new number one chess engine with a massive new neural network trained by Albert Fish or Albert Silver with the original Fat Fritz. They advertised Fat for its two as using novel strong ideas compared to existing chess engines, but in reality, Fat for its two is just stockfish with a different neural network and minimal changes that are neither innovative nor appear to make the engine stronger. Um <clears throat> whoa. Okay, so basically it sounds like What's going on is they're saying that they took the engine and um, they took the engine and they just made very small, small changes. Now, again, to give you guys context, I'll give you guys an example. So just to give you guys an example, let me let me let me look up Stockfish. OK, you see, uh, I know the scene is wrong, so it doesn't matter. But I can go to this website for Stockfish 13 and I can very simply click here and download Stockfish 13 It is open source. It's completely available to anyone. So I can just hit this download button, download the engine, open some chess software, and load the engine um, to be very clear. So I think what's being said here is that they took this engine, they just downloaded like you or me or anybody else, and they made very minimal changes to the open source engine that they had just downloaded, and they're now repackaging and selling it for money. So let's keep going. As this is not the first time something like this has happened involving both Chessbase and Albert Silver, we would like to share our impression of these releases. Dusex. Uh, sorry, well, let, me, let me get the scroll right. Um, okay, Deuce X. In July 2018, Silver secretly sent the Leela Chess Zero engine with a custom neural network he had trained to participate in TCEC under the name Deus X. The network was trained using scripts from the Leela project, and the network architecture was the same as that used by, by the Leela Chess engine. See this older Leela blog post for details. <clears throat> Training such a network is not unusual. Members of the Leela project do so regularly to test ideas, but they have never pretended to have created a new engine by training a new network. While an, overwhel while an overwhelming part of Deus Ex's strength is inherited from Leela, Silver has downplayed the Leela work enormously in an interview suggesting that he did in a few months what had taken other engine authors decades. Silver described himself as the engine author even though the engine itself was Leela without significant modification. <clears throat> okay. Wow, so pretty serious stuff here. So Fat Fritz. The following year, Silver released an updated version of the Deus Ex network under the name Fat Fritz, sold as a part of Chessbase Fritz's package for 79.90 euros, which is about 100 US dollars or close enough. Um, once again, it used the Leela engine without functional changes. The changes made included modifying the name and author strings and some default parameter values. Okay. Fat Fritz was marketed as, this, as if it were an innovative engine instead of being just a renamed Leela. As an example, the product description begins. It's a semi-secret development, an Alpha Zero clone engineered over the past nine months and doesn't mention Leela. Probably the closest to what can be used to what can be called an attri attribution is a brief mention in the middle of one of the articles saying that Fat Fritz uses Leela as a foundation. In reality, Fat Fritz is Leela, but with a different net. Even this article begins by describing an inspiring talk given by a DeepMind employee to chess-based programmers supporting the false impression that Chessbase played a significant role in development of the Fat Fritz code. Wow. In Chessbase articles, the Fat Fritz engine was described in a way that implied it was stronger than Stockfish and Leela, but the evidence was questionable. Silver Stockfish comparison, for example, uses an outdated version of Stockfish, even though the development version we, we, was known to be considerably stronger. Similarly, when compared to Leela, the strongest configuration of Leela was not used. Oh, very sneaky. Whoa, very sneaky. Um, wow. 
Very, very sneaky. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> let's see. Let's let's keep scrolling. We have a tweet from Giancarlo pa pa Pascudo. Uh, if your idea of innovation in chess is charging uh, is charging 100 euros for changing the parameters of an open source engine, you're going to have some problems competing with chess.com and leechess.org. Nice. Um, wow. Wow. So, um, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's keep going with the article so far. I mean, you're seeing one side of the, of the story, which again, I think, especially in these day, in, in this day and age, you should be aware there are two sides to any story. So, um, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Chess, chess base, you guys, not chess bay. Very funny. Um, Oh, Giancarlo Pescudo is an author of several strong chess and go engines and contributor to the Stockfish and Leela Chess Zero project. Okay. So he's actually, this is a tweet from someone with actual knowledge, a uh, programmer involved with Stockfish and Leela. Let's keep, let's keep rolling. Fat Fritz 2. In 2020, Stockfish Leela's main competitors started to support NNUE fast neural networks that can be run on a CPU. This feature improved Stockfish significantly, restoring its status as the strongest existing chess engine. The Stockfish team had the same painful experience as the Leela team when Silver decided to jump on the hype train again and released Fat Fritz 2 sold by Chessbase for 99.9 .9 euros. It is now Stockfish that has been copied instead of Leela, but the overall style is unchanged. Wow. This is pretty serious. It's very, very serious. Okay. As with Leela and FF and Fat for its one, only minimal changes have been made to the Stockfish engine. Again, the name of the software and the authors um, and some default parameters. Even though the Stockfish engine is critical for playing strength, it is mentioned only briefly, and the impact of the Fat for its two neural network over the one one used by Stockfish is greatly overstated. The product description says FF2 is learning from the surgical precision of Stockfish's legendary search, but it isn't learning from Stockfish. It is Stockfish. As before, Fat Fritz 2 isn't or Fat Fritz 2 is advertised as the strongest engine, but the only results uh, presented are against an older version of Stockfish and not the version used by FF2. Independent results show that the current Stockfish versions on which FF2 is based or Fat Fritz 2 are based are in fact stronger than Fat Fritz 2, suggesting that Silver's net does not add playing strength. Chessbase has published an interview with Silver describing the work. In the text accompanying the interview, they describe Silver as the inventor of Fat Fritz 2 and say that he started the project almost completely from scratch. In reality, only minimal changes were made and Silver likely did not author them. Silver describes Fat Fritz 2 as a completely new neural network, but it uses the Stockfish, Stockfish topology and differs from Stockfish's network only in layer sizes. Again, this is a little bit, little bit random. I don't know exactly what this means. People who are programmers could, could fill me in on this. Um, but basically, basically, it sounds like they just they're making minor changes. The interview article also says that Silver came across a new neural network technology from Japan, presumably because NNUE was originally implemented in Shogi engines. While it may sound as if Silver was responsible for bringing this innovation to chess, he did not implement NNUE and used mostly Stockfish tools to train the network. Okay. Let's keep going. Conclusion. Um, it is sad to see claims of innovation where there, ha where there have been none and claims of, an, of improvement in an engine that is weaker than its open source origins. It is also sad to see people appropriating the open source work and effort of others and claiming it as their own. Everyone is permitted and encouraged to modify and improve code from Stockfish Leela while giving credit. That is the intent of open source software. Everyone is allowed to copy Stockfish Leela and sell them, provided the terms of the Stockfish Leela license are met. But don't pretend that the product being sold is something it isn't. Wow. Okay. So this is this is very, of course, one-sided. Um, in terms of an article, I think I will probably pull up the Chessbase article next to keep going. Uh, but this sounds very serious. Now, I will say Albert Silver is someone that I do know. Um, and from having known him, he is definitely not a computer programmer. I will state that very clearly that 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 I do. I mean, I, I do know Albert. Um, but he is not a programmer. So when they talk about these minimal changes, it is probably correct that, that, that he did not implement them most likely. Um, so I, I will, I will add that. Now there's gotta be another side to the story. So, um, but this is, this is pretty bad. It sounds like, again, I'm not a computer programmer, but when you read this one side, um, when, when you read this one side of it, it seems very clear to me that, um, that these are very serious, uh, serious, uh, points that are being made here. And unless there's like a clear, uh, clear refutation, I mean, um, unless there's like a clear refutation on the other side, then, then I'm, I'm very, I'm very skeptical.
Okay, Let, let's pull this up. Okay, here we go. Next article. Interview with Albert Silver, his journey to Fat Fritz 2.0. Albert Silver is the head coach of Fat Fritz and its successor. His path to inventing the 2.0 engine is worth talking about because once he was almost ready to publish to publish it, um, he came across a new neural network technology from Japan, NNUE. Uh, Silver reconsidered his close to finish project and dedicated his mind and soul to the efficiently updated neural network. It paid off. Fat Fritz 2.0 is out and ready now defining opening theory with a the human touch and being as precise as can be in end games. Let's keep going. Um, oh, it's just, it's a very short, it's just a bunch of videos or something, I guess is what it is. But, but I'm actually, gonna, I'm actually gonna, um, go, go for, go further with it, uh, in general terms. So one problem I have with this in general is that as far as chess base goes and like sort of renaming stuff, there was a program for many years that was called Fritz. And to give you give you guys some background here, let me see if I can find Fritz for uh, fr Fritz for. Let me see if I can find it on Wikipedia or something. Um, was it with a German program? It was, it was developed many many years ago. Um, I, Fritz was probably the earliest chess engine that I was using in the early '90s. It's like there was like Fritz four, Fritz five, Fritz six, and so forth. Um, and it was it was one of the most most powerful chess programs probably until I would say about like the early 2000s, and then it was surpassed by many other chess programs. Um, but I remember some years back there was I don't know if I can even find the the article. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, I'm just gonna Google something. Yeah. So so like there there was a forum that I, that I was trying to find, which is that the chess chess base basically hired this guy Voss Rylick. Um, he's an he's an American player by the way. I I. I can't find it, so I'll just go back to the article. But there was this guy, Voss Riley, like I'll write his name in chat. Um, and uh, basically, Chessbase hired him to sort of improve the algorithms and make a better version of, of Fritz. Now, there's there's more to this story that I'll, I'll go into that whole separate separate side um, at, at a separate part. But basically, he was hired by Chessbase to improve Fritz and come out with a new version. So clearly, that did not happen. At some point, I guess he couldn't he couldn't change the algorithms or he couldn't he couldn't tinker enough with with, with the code in a way that made it competitive. And um, and so I think that's why now um, now like this whole thing with Albert Silver and Fat Fritz, I'm very skeptical because there was a trajectory of them making a better engine with the existing existing code they had, and then they just scrapped it and made a whole new whole new program. Basically, um, is what it sounds like. So. All right, let's um, let's go to this other topic. And the reason I think this is so serious is because something else happened, which I think, in my opinion, is a lot less uh, it's a lot less severe. But uh, I'm gonna pull up this article now. So there was this article. So there was this pr this program in the early 2000s. It was called um, it was called Ribka. It was it, it became the strongest chess chess playing program in the world. Um, and probably from the early 2000s until the eventual ban. It um it, it was it was just incredible. So so let's let's read this article. Ripka's disqualification and ban from computer chess last summer by the International Computer Games Association (ICGA) is being disputed. In a 31-page article, a computer scientist working at London's Queen Mary University, supported by two chess programs, are, two chess programmers, argues that the ICGA's findings were misleading and the decision to punish Ribka and its programmer Vasek Rylik lacked any sense of proportion. Meanwhile, the ICGA has responded with a technical rebuttal. So let's let's keep going. Um, disqualification and ban. Last summer, the International Computer Games Association, ICGA, disqualified and banned Ribka and its programmer, Vasek Rylik, from previous and future World Computer Chess Championships. The ICGA accused Rylik of plagiarizing two other programs, Crafty and Fruit, and demanded that he return the trophies and prize money of the World Computer Chess Championship in 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. A report on the news made mainstream media. It was picked up by the influential Extreme Times and then copied by hundreds, if not thousands, of site, sites, including the New York Times and Der Spiegel. Chessbase. It was the biggest computer chess story of recent years, but the editorial team of Chessbase didn't cover it. This is obviously related to the fact that German company is, in fact, distributing and selling Ribka in their shop. It can be seen that on the Ribka 4 DVT, the tagline Computer Chess World Champion has now been traded for PC Chess Program by Voss Rylik. Okay, exciting. This gets better. Last week, however, uh, Chessbase ended its silence. They published a lengthy article in four parts. You can download it in full in PDF here, dramatically entitled A Gross Miscarriage of Justice in Computer Chess and written by Dr. Soren Rees. Okay, Rees's article. Let's keep going. The author, a computer scientist at Queen Mary University in London, 
makes a case that the ICJ's allegations of plagiarism, as well as the points they offered in support of their accusation, are without merit. The author, who is supported by an extensive technical report by Ed Schroeder, as well as support in the form of unpublished notes from chess programmer Savan Shul, argues that the ICJ's charges were based on false premises, tendency, tendicious conclusions, and manipulated evidence. Um, Reese speculates that, that the chief motivating factor behind the persecution of Rylick was his domination of computer chess programming from 2005 to 2010, during which time his program Ribka almost invariably annihilated other programs in public tournaments. The computer scientist and mathematician mentions that the people who voted for the Rylick ban were direct beneficiaries and actually picked up his vacant titles, collateral, which they now use to market their own chess engines. Reese further observes that, if anything, it is Rylick's program that has been systematically reverse engineered and plagiarized. According to, Reese's, according to Reese, justice can only be served if the ICGA publishes a retraction of their accusations and restores Ribka's world championship titles, concluding his defense by extolling Rylick as a great chess programmer, world champion, and innocent man. So let's keep going. Biased. Um, we asked Mr. Reese, who is not only a computer scientist in London, but also a Ribka forum moderator, and they're closely connected to the Ribka family for some more background. He, he, he replied to us, there were strong arguments for publishing the article Chess Vibes as you would be more seen as more, more neutral while publishing with Chess Base would have been open, would open up for the most trivial counterattack, qui bono. However, since I am a Ribka Forum moderator, it was clear that my article would always be seen as biased. When I first read the ICGA report, I thought they put a convincing case, but it was only when I investigated the case I began to realize the full extent of the injustice. It, it was at this point that I decided to write my article, which is written as a defense of Vasek Rylik, and it is as much for him as it is to satisfy my own sense of justice and fair play. ICGA. We also asked the International Computer Games Association to comment. Dr. David Levy, head of the ICGA, sent us and Chessbase a lengthy rebuttal entitled No Miscarriage or Justice, Just Bias Reporting. You can download it in full PDF here, but we'll quote from it. As a historical review of progress in, in computer chess, Reese's article contains important and interesting information and comments. Unfortunately, however, his thesis lacks objectivity because it circles the core questions and attempts to defend Rylick by attacking the rule he was accused of breaking, attacking the investigative process in various ways, and attacking some of those involved in that process. When a defendant is brought before a court of law, what is in question is whether or not uh, he or she broke the law and whether or not the law itself is appropriate, and so it is with the ICGA rules. And considering the Ribka case, the ICGA's task was to decide the matter on the basis of his tournament rule to not the question itself. In his article, Levy tries to point out the irrelevance um, of the ICGA rules and some of Reese's key arguments and correct some of his erroneous assumptions. He then gives a number of examples that, according to Levy, point out or yeah levy yeah point out that reese's article at chess base uh is a case of bias reporting okay so there's a technical rebuttal um okay let's see let's see basically i mean i don't want to get through the whole reading this whole thing um basically like let, let, let me let me pull i think we have this new york times article let, let me um let me let me pull this one up because i think it's a little bit more in plain english um so let me let me pull this new york times article up give me one second but basically, to sum it up, uh, assuming that neither article does it necessarily, um, what happens is that there was a claim that some of the code from uh, from from basically, I believe it was uh, Fritz or Junior or or, um, or sorry, no, it wasn't Fritz or Junior. It was uh, it was it was Fruit. I think there was a chess program called Loser Fruit. Um, or sorry, no, there's um, no, there's a program called Fruit. Just Fruit. Just Fruit. Sorry. Um, so there's a program called Fruit, and basically they claimed that there was code stolen. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through this article because I think this is a little bit more in plain English. Players who use computers to cheat are a growing concern in the chess world. Now the developer of Ribka, the winner of the last four world chess championships, has been accused of plagiarizing code to create the program. Ribka has been stripped of its titles and its developer, Voss Rylik, uh, has been barred from entering programs in competitions. The ruling on Ribka and Mr. Rylik was made Tuesday by the International Computer Gaming Association, the group that organizes the championships. It concludes that Mr. Rylik, who had American and Czech citizenship and lives in Poland, has, had used source code from programs called Crafty and Fruit. We are convinced that the evidence against Vasek Rylik is both overwhelming in its volume and beyond reasonable question in its nature, the, the association's exec, executive committee said in a statement. So what they're saying is, is, that, um, is that essentially he stole code from two programs, or, or he copied code basically from two, from two programs and put it into his program. Now, again, they ruled that this is, uh, this is not right. This was 2011, by the way. But basically, they, they made that claim. Um, okay, so the group said that by using code from Crafty and Fruit, Mr. Rylick had violated Rule 2 of its guidelines, which requires that programs must either be original 
or must name some other programmer whose work was used. Okay. So actually this is, this is actually worthwhile because doesn't this essentially already prove the point that, um, that what chess base has done, uh, they, sh they should basically be banned from competition. I mean, or is it, or are they claiming that it's open source? Okay. I mean, I'm not sure, but okay. This is interesting. But if he plagiarized and why was his program so overpowered? So this is kind of where I think the whole thing, the whole thing goes about. So let, let's keep going. Mr. Rylick, who's an international master chess player, did not respond to an email asking about the association's accusations and decision. Um, okay. When questions, I will skip this paragraph. When questions were first raised about Ribka earlier this year, Mr. Rylick wrote on a forum on his program's website that Ribka is is and always was completely original code with the exception of various low level snippets, which are in the public domain. Crafty is an open source program fruit, which was once sold commercially is now free on its website and no longer being developed. Okay. So this is from 2011. Okay. Um, okay. So let's keep going. Wow. Okay. Um, Mark A. Lem Lemley, a Stanford law professor who specializes in science and technology issues, wrote in an email that because Fruit and Craft are freely available, may mean that Mr. Rylick is not guilty of misconduct if he copied some of the code. But Mr. Lemley added, I can see why the Computer Gaming Association might want to prohibit it under its rules. Okay. Plagiarizing code is nothing new. Mr. Levy wrote in an article this year that a program called Quick Step was found to be almost identical to one called Mephisto in 1989. Now, actually, I am pretty sure that in the, um, that I think in like 1995 or 96, I think I did play against this program, no, actually 96 or 97. I think I remember this program called Mephisto, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, only last year, uh, the, the Squark N2 program was banned from the Computer Chess Championship after it was found to differ in only three small respects from the code of Robolito 0.85G3. Okay, let's keep going. Larry Kaufman, a grandmaster who helped Mr. Rylick in the development of Ribka, but now who now works on a rival called Komodo, said in an email that he believed only earlier versions of Ribka were based on Fruit and Crafty. In my opinion, there was a reasonable basis for the disqualification of Ribka 1 and any tournament victories that occurred within a year or so of its release, Mr. Kaufman wrote. By the time Ribka 3 came out, it was for all practical purposes a completely new program, he said. Robert M. Hyatt, the developer of Crafty, who is an associate professor of computer science at the University of Alabama at Birmingham and who participated in the Computer, Cham computer Association's investigation, said he was certain that Mr. Rylick had used some of his code. Dr. Hyatt said he was not said he was concerned about how common plagiarizing was becoming, and he noted that Mr. Riley himself had been plagiarized. We already have a clone of Ribka, and now others have copied that copy and are trying to claim unique authorship, Dr. Hyatt wrote in an email. This is not going to die away quickly or quietly, it seems. Wow. So this is insane because this is an article from 2011, you guys. This is an article from 2011. 2011. 2011. And in 2011, you see there was a big, big issue with Ribka. And then you're saying that, like, Ribka came out, then people were cloning Ribka. Now people were cloning that. And everyone's just trying to clone, clone the engine and claim that it's their own engine. Um, and this, by the way, is, is why I'm such a big fan of history, I would add as well, because when you look at it in the context of history, this is an article from 10 years ago. And as, we, as, as I like the, the saying, as the saying goes, if you, for, it's basically, if you forget the past, you're doomed to repeat it. And, um, this seems to be the exact same case in terms of what's going on, because, um, what you, what you see here is basically you see a, a situation where Ribka probably there was some code that was taken out of crafty and fruit and it was incorporated into their engine. Um, now in a per, on a personal level, what I would say is I kind of, I, I lean towards Ribka in the sense that the engine more or less was completely its own software. And, um, and I think that Voss Rylick was a great programmer and he created a program that was amazingly strong. So, um, I personally, I, I think it's skeptical. I think the band probably had a lot to do with the fact that he was just crushing every competition. That's my personal opinion. Um, that's, you know, I'm not stating facts or anything, but my personal opinion is that he took a little bit of code, incorporated it into the original version. Maybe it was still in there. Maybe it wasn't, but everything else was his own. And because he was able to create such an amazing program that was so strong, the people in the computer, computer chess, computer gaming association, essentially they decided kind of, you know, it's like, it's what it is, but that's just a personal opinion. So, all right. Um, in, in the meantime, I will say this. I think, uh, I think that now when you look at fat Fritz two, it looks very clear to me that this is much more significant in terms of, uh, in terms of what's going on. So, um, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. 
it, it seems I, I I don't like this. I I think you know when I compare what happened with Ribka with the the huge amount of damages, the way they they basically that they 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 punished punished Voss the programmer. Um, and now you see essentially something that to me looks um looks uh a much more clear cut where you literally just took all the code and changed it. I'm I I don't know. It looks very very bad. That being said. Uh, there's very limited art there there's like no there are no real articles on the other side of um you know basically like the chess base side or albert silver so i mean if, if albert wants to come on and 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 talk about it i mean i'm more than willing to have him on um and we can discuss it i mean if anybody from sockfish or leela of course if they're interested i certainly would be open to that too but overall my general general impression is that it seems i mean it feels, you know, I I, I like to, it's like, I have the saying kind of, which is like when, when something seems too good to be true, generally there's more to it, or it's like you don't get your free lunch or whatever. And this just seems extremely damning. So it's hard for me to believe that there isn't something on the other side to be said. Um, So th that's, that's what I would say. Having said that, I mean, when you come out and you basically say it's the same program, I'm not a, I'm not a computer, computer programmer. I don't really know that much about it. But it feels like this is something that, from a factual standpoint, you could prove very easily in terms of whether it literally is the same code or not. Um, so that's that's my take. And I think, yeah, if if, uh, if, if anyone from Sockfish or Lilo wants to discuss, and of course, if Albert wants to come on, um, then, I, then I will. But, but yeah, I think, to me, it looks very bad. And um, I'm just, yeah, very... Uh, it's it's not good it's not good i know you guys can't see the end of the article we already read read through it but yeah totally happy to host a discussion debate or a chess boxing match if um if they're they're interested is what i would say um but isn't it open source right well let's think if it's open source that means you can literally take take the code right but if it's literally the same code and then you repackage it and sell for money I mean, I, I think that that's wrong. I, it's just it's just a hundred percent wrong. And um, and like I said, it does jive based on what I know about Albert personally. He is not a computer programmer, um, and and so it it really does jive. It, it, a lot of the stuff in here does jive. So all right, you guys. I think I think I think that's good for now for our coverage of this. Um, uh, so we'll keep keep rolling along. But but I just I, I feel that it's uh, it's yeah it's crazy though. It's just crazy. And this is why you, this is why you study history. You study history because 10 years ago, you already saw this 10 years ago, 2011, someone already was saying they were having a problem with this. And now 10 years later, you have it happening again. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I don't, I don't, I don't know the specifics of what is legal, what isn't legal, but, um, but definitely to me, it seems, it seems pretty bad. It seems pretty bad. It's, it's it, 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 is it illegal to make money from open source? I mean, is it illegal? Because I mean, I, I don't actually know, but it sounds legal, but scummy possibly. Is there, someone have a link to the Stockfish, uh, Stockfish, Stockfish blog? I'll, I'll read that. I'll read one more article. If someone has a link to the Stockfish one. Okay. There it is. Okay. It got, it got blocked out, but I'll pull it up here. Okay. We'll read one more. Okay. It's a pretty short one. Stockfish blog. All right. So Stockfish is an open source project sharing and freely distributing the code tools and data needed to deliver the chess engine. We do this because we are convinced that open software and open data are key ingredients to make rapid progress and thus for the benefits of our users. The recent progress and playing strength of Stockfish confirms the path taken. We proudly provide the tools for free chess analysis to millions of users with countless titles, with countless title players using Stockfish for their preparation. Be assured that free engines will serve you well. Recently, Chessbase has started distribution and sales of the Fat Fritz 2 chess engine. The chess engine is a Stockfish derivative with a few lines of code modification, engine name, author's list, and a few parameters, and a new set of NNUE net weights considered proprietary. Okay. Um, so basically, I mean, I'm not a programmer, but doesn't that also basically say you just take the parameters and you magically just, you just randomly change them around? I mean, isn't that just like changing numbers? Like, I, I don't know. That seems... That that seems very very dubious, very dubious. That's very very dubious. Like you change you change you change the weights like the numbers around and it's proprietary. When basically the whole program is created off of this code, very 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 suspicious. Um, okay, chess based communication on FatFritz two claiming originality where there is none has shocked our community. Furthermore, the engine FatFritz two fails to convince on independent rating lists, casting doubt casting doubt on the usefulness of those modifications. Indeed, we feel that customers buying Fat Fritz 2 get very little added value for the money. Claims to the contrary appear misleading. 
Selling stockfish derivatives is possible with the GPLv3 license we grant, but not without requirements. In particular, the license states that if one redistributes a program derived from our work, the corresponding modifications of our source and all information needed to build that program must be made available. Only after explicitly informing Albert Silver, Albert, Albert Silver, the author of the net in Fat Fritz 2, of a license violation, have have ha, wait sorry. Only after explicitly informing Albert Silver of a license violation ha, having Kitaro matching code matching C++ sources, but not cents. the net weights, has been made Congrats made available. Obviously, today. we condemn the approach taken. Used Avand Vandele, current maintainer of the Stockfish program. Um. So basically, as I understand it, what they're saying is they're saying, yes, you can, I guess, theoretically, you can, you can, you can redistribute a program, but basically you have to make it all available. It's like, okay, whatever change you made, you have to show it. You basically have to show everything that, um, that, that you changed. Um, but it sounds like they're saying Chessbase did not do that. And they're trying to claim that they, they, um, that they, uh, that they create a new program. It's like, yeah, so it's it's like, I, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I can't think of one right off, but but I feel like it's just one of these things, you, if, if, I, if you change a few little things, it's like, oh yeah, it's it's mine. Um, so this is actually pretty pretty harsh too. And I think, um, I think it is worth noting once again that I think Albert really, I mean, I, I think he has to put out a statement. I mean, really, they have to explain what they did. And again, none of it jives. I said this before and I'll say it again. The reason none of this drives for me is because Albert Silver is not a computer programmer by nature. Um, so that's why I'm very, very skeptical about this. Um, so so that, that's, that's, that's what I would say. Um, and there's also this, there's a TOS. What is this? We have a TOS, um, Terms of Use. Um, Stockfish is free and distributed under the GNU General Public License version 3 GPL v3. Essentially, this means that you're free to do almost exactly what you want with the program, including distributing it among, among your friends, making it available for download from your website, selling it either by itself or as part of some bigger software packaging, or using it as a starting point for a software project of your own. The only real limitation is that whenever you distribute Stockfish in some way, you must always include the full source code, of course, um, or a pointer to where the source code can be found to generate the exact binary you're distributing. If you make any changes to the source code, these changes must also be made available under the GPL. For full de details, read the copy of the GPL v3 found in the file named copying.txt. Obviously, I'm not going to open that. Um, but yeah, so so um, that seems basically what it's saying in, in plain English is you have to make your source code available. End of story. That's all there is to it. And if you don't do that, then... Um, if you don't do that, that's uh, that's not fine. So I mean, I feel like Albert really needs to come out and make make a statement. Um, if he wants to come on here and talk to me, I have no problem with that as well. So um, yeah, so we'll see. Um, but at any rate, it seems very 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 dubious and quite devious, frankly, trying to make money off of off of this. Um, so yeah, all right, you guys. I think that is it for now in terms of in terms of covering this 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 drama. But I 100% am on the side of uh, of um, of what you know of the of the open source programs. 100%. It's it's not acceptable what happened.